In Ezekiel chapter 33, we read these verses. <coughs> Whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not heed to the warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own hands. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh the warning shall deliver his soul. You know, for years, the sound of the trumpet and the gospel message has been redounding across this province of Ulster. Most of us, if not all of us, have heard it some way or another. Maybe at Sunday school, maybe in your church, maybe a gospel tract or a gospel meeting, maybe a tent or a mission, maybe some other means you've heard it by radio, the sound of the trumpet. But sadly, there's some of you here tonight and you've not taken heed to the warning. You've not taken heed to the warning. Let me tell you that you cannot ignore the gospel for so long. And let me say to you tonight that, the, that your blood will be upon your own hands if you have heard it. And if you haven't heard it, which I doubt, there's nobody but has here. But if you haven't, the blood will be on the hands of those who should have told it to you. Now, there's just a couple of reasons tonight I want to give in closing why I'm glad I'm not in the sinner's shoes, why I'm glad I'm not in the sinner's shoes. And the first reason that I'm glad that I'm not in the sinner's shoes is because, my friend, we're heading, sinners are heading towards hell. I'm 72 years of age and I'm glad I'm not in the sinner's shoes because if I was still a sinner, what an awesome load of sin would be behind me. And I'm glad I'm not in the sinner's shoes tonight because of the sin that is behind them. My friend, were born in sin and shapen in iniquity. In sin did our mothers conceive us. And every day and every hour, it's like a snowball. It's getting greater and getting greater and getting greater. What a load of sin would be behind me at 72 years of age. What a load of sin is behind you tonight at 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. Oh, think of the sins of words, the sins of deeds. Think of ye sins of thought. Think of all the sins. Think of the commandments that have been broken. Think of the things that you've stolen. Think of, the, of, of all the evil and wickedness down through a lifetime of sinning in a sinful world. My friend, let me say to you tonight, that it could all explode in one moment. Yeah. You're on very dangerous ground. You could explode just in one moment. There could be an aneurysm. There could be a hemorrhage. There could be a coronary. And my friend, you'll go out into a lost, you'll go out into a lost eternity because of the sin and the load of sin. Oh, it doesn't bear thinking about. You'll go out before a holy God with all your sins and all your iniquities yet to be dealt with by the judgment of God. So the first thing, I wouldn't want to be in the sinner's shoes because of what's behind them. I wouldn't want to be in the sinner's shoes because what's above them. Can I say to you tonight in the premise of the word of God that there's an angry God above us? that God is angry with the wicked every day, 
and he's angry with men and women because he's a holy God and he hates sin. He loves the sinner, but he hates sin. And he's angry with men and women tonight, especially because they refuse and they rebut and they reject the message of saving grace through the work of the cross. But Andy's angry tonight because you will not receive the gift that he has provided for you to come. The gift that he has given free of charge, of course, down to the years. He has been pleading with you. He has been speaking to you. He has been showing you. Here it is. The gift of God is eternal life. Here you are. Come to the cross. Receive Christ my son as your saviour. And that load will be lifted. And your sins will be forgiven. And you'll be on your way to heaven. But you say, you say, am I speaking to someone tonight? You say, sir. You say, Mrs. Tonight, I will not have this man to rule over me. And my friend, God's looking upon you tonight and he hears your cry and he hears what you're saying and he'll hear your cry if you come with repentance and he sees you tonight in all our load of sin and all our darkness and he has made a way, he has provided a way and we will not come and receive it. What a rebuke to our God to the mighty God that loves the world, to the mighty God who gave a son to die. I wouldn't be in your shoes tonight, dear sinner, for what's behind you and that awful load of sin that's fallen you every moment and every day. And every one of those sins will give a, be accounted for. I am glad I'm not in the sinner's shoes. Be what is, of what is above us is an angry God. But I am certainly glad that I'm not in the sinner's shoes tonight because of what is beneath us. My friend, beneath it, we have heard already from this pulpit, we have heard beneath us is a burning, everlasting fire of hell. And men and women are dropping into it now, just as this moment as I speak. You cannot, you cannot reject, you cannot trample over the blood of Christ. You cannot hear the sound of the message of the trumpet of the gospel time and time again. Reject it, have nothing to do with it. Turn away from God and go to heaven at the end of the day. My friend, it's impossible. It's impossible. And there's only one place. And that place, my friend, is an eternal hell where, where we heard tonight that the fire is not quenched. And the reason the fire is not quenched is because there's fuel always piling into it. There's fuel. A fire can't go without fuel. My friend, will you be fuel in the devouring fire? You could drop into hell at any moment. We have heard already there's but a step between me and death. Even tonight, you could be, it could be your last step. Even tonight, my friend, it could be your last breath. In Psalm 40, it says, the psalmist says, he brought me up out of a horrible pit. You know, in the marginal reference of the King James Version, that says a noisy pit. Jesus says it was a noisy pit. He says, hell is a noisy pit where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. If you multiply that by millions, by millions, my friend, it is a noisy place, hell. Will you be amongst them? Will you be in them? Will you drop into it? Will you refuse the gospel tonight? Will you go home the same as you come? Or will you accept them as your saviour? The choice is yours. The choice is yours. These men have been faithful over the weeks and sounding the trumpet, sending out the message, this glorious message that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died and rose again for sin and lives in the power of an endless life and the whosoever will may come. There's no need for you to perish tonight. All of those sins, every last one of them, my friend, in one split second can be obliterated and forgiven forever. What a message we have. And the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. Oh, come tonight. Mother, come tonight. Young man, come tonight. Don't go home without Christ. Don't go home without seeing some of us in the field. If you're a backslider tonight, get restored and get into the battle. Get into the joy of the Lord. Get into the peace of God in your soul. And don't go into the place where there's everlasting torments. And the everlasting smoke goes up forever and forever. It says in Revelation, Oh, God, help us that you'll not go into hell. You'll not drop into hell. It's a real place. 
My friend is a bottomless pit, ever drown, ever dropping but never falling, ever burning but never burned. Jesus said 53 times in the Old Testament to read of this awful place, never mind what Jesus tells us about it. Are you going to come tonight? Are you going to come to Christ? Are you going to repent? Are you going to say, Lord, Lord, save me. Lord, I have a load of sins, of awful sins, have awful sins behind me over 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years, but tonight I'm going to uh, repent of them, confess them, and ask the Lord Jesus into your heart. Will you do that tonight? I wouldn't want to be in your shoes if there was one sin behind I wouldn't want to be in your shoes, my friend, in the sinner's shoes, with all the sin that's behind them. I wouldn't want to be in the sinner's shoes with an angry God above. And I wouldn't want to be in the sinner's shoes for what's below us, because hell is down and down we're going, without Christ, without hope and without God. Oh, don't, don't miss it tonight. Don't go to hell tonight. Say, Lord, I'm coming, coming now to thee. Wash me, cleanse me in the blood that flows from Calvary. Blessed Lord Jesus, who gave us life, a ransom for us all, to save us for time and for all eternity. Will you come? Will you listen to our brothers? He sings this closing piece. And then the, the meeting will be over. But we'll be here to talk to you. We'll be here to go to your home. We'll do what we can. We'll sit in your car. Don't leave. Don't leave tonight without getting right with God. There you might never get another opportunity, and there you might never hear that sweet sound of the trumpet of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ sounding ever again in your ears or in your soul.